Okay, it says that we are now streaming live on Facebook. So welcome everybody. It is Friday, August the 14th, and this is Beyond the Cloud. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful summer, which is already more than half over. I don't know where the time has gone, but we're not going to talk about that because that's depressing. Um, so, and you know what? I don't even have a question prepared today. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about it. Um, I know, okay. Beatles or Rolling Stones? How about that? So as we introduce ourselves. Now, that's really hard because I am a total Beatles fan, but I am not one of those ones. It says it has to be one or the other. If I had to choose, I could not live my life without the Beatles, though. So Tanya Hilt's called Business Services and Tanya's Bookkeeper's Bootcamp. And I am such a diehard Beatles fan that I kind of stood in line for when the Beatles rock band came out and came home and played it. I did that for the Green Day one, too, because I thought that in our little tiny town of... 50,000, well, a little city of 50,000 people at Best Buy that is mostly senior people that they would sell out. So I was in lineup at the store before the store opened. And my husband, my sister, my daughter all told me that I was an absolute nerd, but that's me. Okay, so Jessica, you're next. Jessica Fogg. Uh, in our little tiny town. Oh, I'm sorry, I got some echo here, my bad. I had accidentally clicked on the live feed stream from oh. Facebook. So anyway, starting over, Jessica Fox, Vendora Fox on Facebook from Florida Virtual Bookkeeper. Uh, it's usually sunny Florida, but it's a little stormy right now. And I love both the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. But if I had to give one for live and I could only listen to one, I, it would have to be the Beatles. That's the one that I would have to keep. I am not as devout as you are, just standing in line before anybody else, but my son is a big fan of the Beatles. So we do get buy a lot of stuff for him. And then I just get to, by association, take advantage. <laughs> That's awesome. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show something on the, if, as a Beatles fan, you might look while everybody else is looking. I'm going to find it on Facebook. It is something extremely rare that only Beatles fans can understand. And I thought of the question because I'm looking at a Beatles poster right on my wall that actually my ex-brother-in-law brought me from uh, Japan when he was there a few years ago. Anyway. Okay. So Stacy. Hello, Stacey Stanley Young from Stanley Young Business Strategies in the heart of Canada. And um, Beatles or Rolling Stones, I'm going to have to say Beatles and then maybe go touch up my gray roots a little bit. If you all think I'm that old. Um, um, no, I, I, I'm just more of a Beatles fan. Rolling Stones, they, they have their place in history, but the music writing and the, the lyrics that John Lennon and Paul McCartney were able to come out with were, and their partnership was pretty impressive. It was. It, I absolutely agree. My brother-in-law at one point was that whole like Paul's really dead and Paul's been replaced and he started to get and I said listen you know what you can sit there and I can go so much down and I'm, I see things on both sides. I said but at the end of the day if Paul McCartney really died and they really replaced him with this fake Paul the fake Paul is just as talented or maybe more so than the original Paul so just leave it at that. <laughs> There's actually a podcast on um uh, impressive duos I, I think is what it was and I only heard half of it but it was all about the partnership with Paul McCartney and John Lennon and if we all had teams that worked that well together um, we would all be amazing yep I agree I agree all right Carol you are next I'm Carol Costa check out Carol on call oh, we can't hear you Hi. that much I can we can hear you a little bit get a little closer no. yeah you sound yeah you sound like you're like at the other side of the room leaning back okay carol costa check out carol and call office assistance better no not really really why my i don't my know blue yep. balls right here oh it's white but it's called blue um can you hear me now the it's almost as as, it's almost as if it's being picked up underneath like a stack of papers. You say it's there, but it's almost as if there's a stack of papers over top of it. It just sounds muffled. Can you hear me now? No, not at all. But nothing changed from this morning. Was it funny this morning? No, no, no. Last time, no. Last call, we could hear you perfect. 
Oh, uh, maybe just try and talk louder. Oh, I can talk louder. <laughs> Do you want me to talk louder? No. That'll work. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Ooh, a little bit. I'm I'm talking right into the microphone. I don't Is know. That, what if I talk like this? Can you hear me better now? Absolutely. That's perfect. Isn't that funny? Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Carol Kostachek of Carol and Call Office Assistance in sunny Maple Ridge, BC, Canada. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> um, yeah, I have seen the Rolling Stones in concert, but I would definitely go Beatles if that's all I could have. Definitely. Yay, Beatles. I've seen Paul in concert once. I've never made it to the Stones. I saw Paul in concert in 1990. I bought, I, I bought I tickets. Oh. oh, sorry. We were, we were first row, I guess, at the Sky Dome in Toronto. And we had front, um, I guess, or the section one or whatever, pretty good seats. And my mom was a Beatles fan. I grew up, you know, the second generation Beatles fan. And um, so I turned around and my mom really wanted to go with her friends. I had four friends that wanted to go. And I said, listen, mom, you take these tickets. They're great tickets. You take them with your friends. We'll wait and see what we can get or grab them off scalpers or something. We'll end up with what we got. My friends argued with me over that, but said, fine, it's your mom. We ended up with eighth row center stage floors. Two days before the concert, my mom was like, I'll take those ones. And my friends were like, we're not giving these up. Sorry, we could have ended up with crap ones. We're not giving these up. So I'm like, sorry, mom. Anyway. And I saw the Stones in concert was their Steel Wheels tour, which was 30 years ago. I was newly sober and uh, yeah. Different concert when you see it sober. <laughs> I was supposed to be at that one, but the tickets that I had... I grew up with a lot of male friends and he, um, Dave and I were supposed to go together and Dave got a girlfriend and the girlfriend was like, no, I'm going. So he gave me my money back from the tickets. I'm like, some friend, like seriously, oh. you do not dump the friend. I was everybody's little sister. That was just it. And I'm like, you do not do that. So we didn't speak. I don't think we hardly spoke at all after that. Anyway, That's wrong. So I missed the seals wheel tour, tour, but yes, I was supposed to be there. Obviously not the same one that you went to. This is Toronto. <laughs> yes. Mine was in Vancouver. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Meredith. All right. Take my glasses off for this one. Hi everybody. I'm Meredith Bissaker and I am the owner of Pacific Rock Accounting on the Pacific Rock, Vancouver Island in Qualicum Beach. And um, this one's really easy for me. So my husband and I are each in rock bands and I sing. And I am so, so, so excited because one of the songs we started working on in my band is Miss You by The Stones. I love the blues. I have uh, the more doc, uh, one of my, the things I love are music documentaries. And the more I watch about Keith Richards, the more I adore him. I mean, we all thought he was like, kind of like, how is he still alive? He actually has some very cool things to say. He's an excellent musician. He's actually a pretty good singer. Awesome ha harmonizer, which is really hard to do. Um, love, 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 love the Stones. I feel a bit like a traitor to my mom because she's all about Paul and the Beatles and loves the Beatles, but I can't, They're, the Beatles come on and I sing along, but they, it doesn't do the same thing that right the Stones does for me. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thanks for listening. <laughs> you, you know what the important part of that introduction was? Meredith is part of a band. How have we not heard you sing yet? You know, I'm like, what? Uh, hello? Come on. <laughs> it's got to be somebody's birthday that we... <laughs> well, <laughs> eventually, I mean, once we can do events again. Yeah. I'm oh. coming to the island. We're going to rock it, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come to even come to one of our practices. <gasps> Tell me when. But I'll be there. Once Excuse me, go away. Woohoo! Yeah, once our, our guest room is done, which is actually going to be my office too, and COVID's over, then come on over because we love having people come and listen to us and group. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, and then you'll have to post videos. We'll have to creep you and see if there's videos. Oh, well, I have Maybe. a friend who has a band on the island, so I have an excuse to go over there every once in a while. So, <laughs> And he's in uh, Nanaimo, so it won't be that far to get to you. Not far at all. Nope. 
Stacy says, COVID will never be over. <laughs> One day, I have faith. He will eventually, he will eventually. I don't mean to be doom and gloom, but I, I just, I don't see it in the, any time in the near future anyway. Not until they get a vaccine. They'll have the flu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Kathy, last but not uh, least. I'm Kathy Battery, CSB Creative Business Solutions in Edmonton, Alberta. And it's a really hard decision like everybody else, but I have to say it has to be the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's just more from my age um, and the time frame and knowing that the Rolling Stones, when they were really, really popular, was an age when I was supposed to be such a sweet angel <laughs> that I just have to say it was the Beatles. <laughs> I like to say uh, she was set, supposed to be such a sweet yes. angel. Supposed to be, yeah. The history you'll never know, Carol. Oh, my son complains all the time. He's like, Mom, I don't know anything about you or what you were like as a teenager or anything that you did. And I said, and you'll never know. That's the reason why your mother's sober. <laughs> this is the advantage of growing up in our formative years without social media. My children. No internet, no cell phones for cameras. Right? Yep. My oh, yeah. children are screwed. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't find a picture I wanted to show, but if anybody out there has heard of the Beatles album Casualties, which is also known as the Butcher album, I actually have one. So Ooh. The Butcher album was an uh, the photo, and it came from my mom, and there was a poster and everything too, but the poster got wrecked um years ago but I still have that the album it's of course packed away and not touched and I'm looking at all these like scratches on it from when I actually used to play it it's like oh my gosh but it is the Beatles in um like butcher like you know when like what your butcher would wear those those white coats but yeah there it is we can't see it that well Kathy or um Carol oh, I know I'm trying to see how I can make it but it's got yeah like meat and baby no closer yeah, like, ba there we go, doll heads and parts all ripped. It's actually really quite morbid. So, yeah, but it's actually called Casualties, the one that I have. So that's Yesterday and Today poster. And I've got one that's actually Casualties. So, and and what had happened with that is they had actually um, produced a whole bunch of them. And then it was supposed to be Rarities. Um, or, they, or they renamed it uh, for rarities and they put a different cover over and this is not one of the ones that I have I've got like a, re a redone bootleg copy of it but one of the originals um, it actually if you've got the proper one has the original album cover with another one pasted over top so if you've got one of those with the original one and the other one pasted over top that's not pulled back or damaged it's worth a ton of money yeah, mine apparently the co the collector said it's probably worth about a hundred bucks because we actually just Did you play played the crap out of it. <laughs> There's skips and everything on there. But. Well, who would have known, right? Yeah, exactly. It would have been one of those things. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll buy two albums. One we'll play the crap out of, and one we'll just put away in storage and never actually take the plastic off of. I've done that. I do that now because I collect, and I do that. I. If you ever want to see me go absolutely mental, go to a Jack White concert with me or Rack on Tours or Dead Weather. He's in all of them. I will lose my mind. <laughs> and I have doubles of all of his stuff. I've even been to his studio in Nashville. I love him. <laughs> love him. Awesome. Well, we have Lawrence who's just joined us now. Lawrence, hello. How are you? I'm terrific. Good, good, good. So we were just finishing introducing ourselves. So you get to introduce yourself to everybody on Facebook world and our question of the day, which is not quite a fair question because I don't believe you have to choose one or the other, but lots of other people out there think that you do is Beatles or Rolling Stones? Beatles. <laughs> no question, no question. No question. <laughs> no question. Yeah. To if the you were to ask me where, Beatles or Led Zeppelin, I'm like, I hate Led Zeppelin. To the point where I'll hear the first two notes and I know the song. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hard and Day's Night. Like, you just one strum and you're like, yep, that's it. <laughs> and then I sing along with it and my son who's 19 will look at me and say, Please stop. You know the words. <laughs> 
I said, just wait to say this chase and switches and start playing disco. <laughs> See, we have, we've got Beatles Trivial Pursuit that nobody will play with me. Um, oh, I can um, see why. <laughs> yes but i don't know as much as like my mom definitely knew more than me but yeah we've got the beatles trivial pursuit i've got hard day's night the movie we've got help the movie we've got yellow submarine the movie yeah of course you know okay. my daughter grew up with all of that too do you remember watching help and there was a scene at the end where they played music from rossini from played music from where sorry rossini the opera because I got it out of the library. Just it stop there. I couldn't, again, that word. It I doesn't want to get. Both my wife and I recall that there's a scene at the end of it where they're running away from someone and they're playing music from one of Rossini's operas. And I got the movie from the library. Rossini's, oh, Rossini's TV, opera. And it wasn't there. But I definitely <gasps> remember seeing it when I was a kid. Oh, that's one of the Mandela effects then. What's the Mandela? <laughs> it must be Mandela effect. My daughter, yeah, my daughter, yeah. Wait, so the Mandela effect, of course, when something happens, and you remember something else happening, and there are so many things that that my daughter will be like, "Yep, Mandela effect." I'm like, "I swear that was there," you know, Nelson Mandela. I swear when I was younger that I he died, and then all of a sudden, I remember years that too. Yeah, and 20 years later, I'm like, what do you mean he died? Didn't he didn't he die like 20 years ago? Like Yep. And then I can't even remember what some of the other ones are. Um, oh, I think there's one that has to do with Queen. Um, what song is that in Queen, Elizabeth, that has a Mandela effect? Oh yeah, we are the champions that right at the very end of the song, I swear to God that I remember them singing of the world at the very end as it fades out. No, you listen it's not to it. of the world. Okay, now I'm that's gonna have to get my son's CD. They, they do in the middle of the song, but yeah, not but at the end. Is, no. The song doesn't fade to that. No, it goes right into "We Will Rock You," doesn't it? Right after that. Well, yeah, or there, or if you just listen to that, but yeah, you're right. It does not do "Of the World" at the end, like you come out and there's. I know, right? Right. There's one with the Monopoly guy too, Elizabeth. What was the that? The Monocle one? and the Monopoly guy. Monocle and the Monopoly guy. He doesn't There's really. so many. Like if you Google this, it's a whole rabbit hole. That you can go down. There's a long oh, list of the things. Monopoly guy. That the Monopoly guy wears a monocle. Apparently, he doesn't. Yes. Look him up. He doesn't. Well, I'm gonna go pull out my Monop my Monopoly set now. So unless there's something that's happened and Mr. we- Mr. Peanut does, and the they're very Mr. similar. Peanut guy so does, yes. That might be why we make that crossover. I don't know. I know, but the peanut guy, when are you doing to him, he's a peanut. He's not the one- <laughs> He is a peanut. You know, right? That's <laughs> true. You are so, very correct, Tanya. He is a peanut. <laughs> but just so he's you know- He's a peanut he's with a top peanut. hat and a monocle and a cane. And he doesn't eat peanuts, just so you know. Right, right. I am. Well, that would be cannibalism if he ate peanuts. <laughs> yes, it would be. Um, is this being recorded right now? Yes. Uh, we Facebook Live so the world can see. Yes. <laughs> I am looking at an image of the Monopoly guy right now Whoa. with a monocle. Oh. Where did you find that? I Googled Monopoly Google. guy monocle. Oh, because somebody probably added a monocle after him. I don't think so. It, I, can I share my screen? I have nothing private on this. Sure, go ahead. Screen. Monopoly guy monocle, you can see right there. That looks kind of like an original picture. Yeah. But then oh, if you look, that's if, not the piece, it's just a picture. No, but look at no. oh. so, but if you look at if you if you look up Wikipedia, so put does the Monopoly guy wear a monocle? Because we're sharing your well, text I'm graphic and writing the screen, you could see it in the corner. But when you share here, see it's funny. So we've got here, contrary to popular belief, rich Uncle Pennybags does not wear a monocle. The confusion may come from another advertising icon, Mr. Peanut, but you're right. It's there, but in all these other ones, he doesn't wear a monocle. And this is Wiki. No, no. That, that she was showing there was another one where he's standing. Yep. So, so it's entirely possible. I just Googled it really quick. So it's entirely possible that those were 
you're right. Somebody drew it in there. It looks like an original picture, but yep, I haven't. Go go back to your screen for a second, Stacy, because there's a couple other pictures where he's in there. Oh yeah, there's. Oh, hang on. I apparently can't share screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong game, Lawrence. Can you see oh. there in the right hand corner? There's the Mandela effect before and after. It has it yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the and the third one down on the far left, he's wearing one. Yep, and that's peep. I swear, yeah, that's I. It's, it's oh, another one, Mandela yeah. effect. Yeah, yep. that's a Reddit that I'm actually subscribed to. That's that that talks about that. Yeah, maybe he was sick for a period of time, so they had to put it in, and then they took it out again. I am so glad that we're able to solve this problem today. <laughs> this is. Well, this is making my day way better than yesterday. So thank we, you. This we, is why I joined these calls. <laughs> we, well, I was saying earlier, Meredith, I don't know if you were on the call at the time. These calls have gotten very expensive for me. I did hear that. <laughs> I, I concur. I concur. I haven't yet, but I, I want to hear what Tanya has okay. to say about it. So yes, we'll do that and then we'll move on to with Jessica for this set. Well, so. because I think you're going to talk about SIFT and I think it's just going to get that more, much more expensive. Um, <laughs> I, it is. I it has had a monopoly board down here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it has made my practice so much better, but getting expensive. That's all. And anyway. make Lawrence go crazy till he finds it. Now you know that. Yeah. So we just need to reconnect and say, okay, what are you not using now, so that you can get rid of, so it's not as expensive now. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that is one of the things that I am currently uh, looking at. The. Um, um, geeky girl that I contracted with that that um, our colleague talked about raved didn't just talk yeah. raved about last week um, uh, she that she calls herself geeky girl because she likes connecting these things in the back end and she's also going to connect click up to 17 hats and nice right wow. oh look at the excitement on everybody's face that's awesome I'm so excited so what we have that What's I'm her name? Geeky girl. geeky girl Okay, but uh, hang on. We just wait. Okay. I'm. I know what you're gonna say, Tanya. So yes, but nobody else knows what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm so excited because I think I know what you're gonna say. So what we have is Friday evening from Amy, who was on here. Remember, I talked about Justin and his his the best videos to watch, and but ClickUp contracted him. He just posted within an hour or two after our phone call or after our our call here. He posted on Facebook that his contract with ClickUp had ended, so he is now free for consulting. I immediately contacted him. I first off bought the big package, so I'm learning stuff so that we can be sharing for those of us in boot camp. For those of us not in boot camp, I have special, I have something as well too. So you'll just have to reach out to me directly for anybody interested. So I have got Justin talked into coming on and giving an hour free to boot campers. But if there's a few out there who we want to squeeze in as visiting boot campers for that day, I am okay with that. And he's going to come on, do like a Q&A, <laughs> um, be able to do that. And like I say, I've got, to, we actually have our first meeting with them, our first training. Um, so we've got three and a half hours. He's very expensive, but I think he's going to be totally worth it. Um, and then, like I said, we'll be able to share that stuff with you him. Say he is totally that. worth it because if he actually listens to this recording, you say, I think he's totally worth it. <laughs> I know. Well, you know what, Jessica, I've already paid. He can't charge me anymore. I've already paid. He's already Tanya. committed to the free one hour. Tanya. You recognize the value, obviously, because you I paid. did. Yeah. Well, I, I sent him the email. I didn't even know what his prices were. I said, this is what I want. We need to do this. And I want to do this. I said, I'm booking you regardless. I said, however, on the other side, it's going to depend on, you know, what your prices are, because either I have to decide if it's worth it for me to pay, or if I can get a bunch of people that want to come in and, you know, each pay a certain percentage. And he sent me the prices and it was 967 for three and a half hours US for him. That's a full training. I'm doing all the setups. He's not doing the setup. So it's a one and a half hour training. We meet um, for another hour and then again we meet for another hour afterwards and I've got three months to use it all in but we can be very specific and pointed and I figured that would be better because then rather than just spending the first time is going to be focusing on what we need the next time we'll be like okay 
what are the goodies now that you know a little bit about how we work what are things i don't know that we could use that you know we can take advantage of um and so on and then yes and then the, the hour free for everybody so just reach out to me directly i will make sure you come on as a visiting boot camper for that day we don't have it scheduled yet but i'm assuming we'll have it scheduled probably very shortly because we're talking monday so that is the good happy news so you're saying that when you're doing that hour and a half with him that we as bookkeepers are invited to it or you're just no doing it? no that's just my training for my oh, firm okay he's yeah. going to come on and do another q a hour so it's not oh, a demo okay. so um we want to actually really make the most out of the hour he's giving us so anybody out there that wants to do it look up quick up do your search i don't want to do a demo with this i want to like can someone come let rosie out please i'm recording um that just to you know dig in to the question. So I do want him to try to book it a few weeks out so that that way anybody who wants to come can go on, take a look at, cluck up, you know, figure things out so that way we can ask questions and get true value out of the hour. Perfect. So that was the exciting news that I had. Yay. Awesome. And then Jessica, we were going to talk about this last time but we got sidetracked because I don't remember why. <laughs> Otter and click up. Yes, That's why we got Otter sidetracked. and click up hijacked it. So SIFT, we were talking SIFT analytics. So SIFT, because yes, we had PayPi was the week before that Smancha, which was PayPi, um, and they were really good. But yeah, we got working in, same thing with, with you, Jessica. We got going in and working with SIFT. And I like the pricing. Again, it's a, a decent pricing structure. Um, they're growing they actually seem to listen so i like that too so what's your opinion of them so far and we haven't really got too too much in but i committed i bought the 129 a month for unlimited clients so i have been test driving it for months but i was re originally using paypal until they pissed me off with watching off their transition so only last month did i actually start connecting clients to sif analytics and I really like it. I find that the, the reports tell me what I'm looking for. I like the forecast builder. It's better than the scenario builder, than Smancha or PayPal, whatever it's called, or other apps. The challenge that I am having right now is that I tend to, I have some clients that like to be more hands-on than others, and they want to be able to log on to these apps and look at stuff. And I knew that I could do this with Seth. So I was like, okay, sh at the next meeting, I'll give you the tour and hook you up. And then, uh, so to test that, to see what they would, what, what the process would look like, I added my personal email as a client and I was horrified at the email invite and in welcome email sequence. So I'm like, ah, I don't know that I want to invite my clients to see this now. I did contact them and I told them, you know, you, the welcome email is tailored to accountants and he talks about booking demos and your accounting firm and we're going to train you doing all this stuff that my clients don't care yeah. about. And then it automatically puts them in this four day welcome sequence to teach them to do these things for accountants. Yeah, so what do they need us for? <laughs> and exactly. Like my, my clients don't want to see this. So I and understand if somebody new signs up, that's valuable. But if they have a client role, they should not be getting this. So they actually replied this morning, or I guess it was last night because they're, you know, different time zones. And they said that they're making a change for client invites. I don't know what that email looks like, but I really hope it's better. Good. Because right now I like it for internal purposes. And if I'm having a meeting with a client to share my screen with them, but if the email invite sequence does not improve, I don't think I'm going to actually give access to the clients that like to just, you know, some of my clients, they wake up at three in the morning and they want to see what's my profitability. <laughs> they just want to look it up themselves. So that's why I wanted to ask you if you had invited any clients and what the experience was in that regards. Then we haven't yet. Um, we have a COVID hit. So we haven't got past our file. This weekend, it is on my task to start adding everybody so that Leanne can start, or adding the client so that we can start working with it for Leanne. But it would have totally been done if COVID hadn't hit. But COVID hit and took me away. <laughs> gotcha, no, I totally understand. So yeah, right now, 
that's where I'm at. I actually had signed up for the first year to make sure that I, you know, before I made the commitment, because I tend to like to buy things for the year if I really like it. Right. So I am on the month to month on the basic subscription. And then I plan to upgrade to the other plan if all goes well. But what I, when I logged on as a test client, because it gives you all of the menus, even if you don't have access to that specific feature, my, if my client clicks on forecast, if they get an upgrade button, they should not be able to see that. No. Nope. So that's where, I'm totally at, where I am really liking it, but really hating it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. So yeah, we're just doing the monthly, the pro. And I just did that. And I'm like, why is it only $99 a month? I'm paying $120, but that's the US dollars. I found the Canadian radio button. I actually like that when they when they have Canadian pricing. I like it. So as Canadians, I know we're gonna pay the same. And I've had this conversation with Invoice Sherpa who their head office is in Montreal, Canada. Um, but, you know, what happens is we've got the exchange rate. I want to know the exact amount coming out. I know I'm going to pay a difference. I know roughly, you know, that's going to be a rough percentage. But whether it's 129 coming off or 135, especially if I'm billing that to my client and I'm not doing enough charge, I want to make sure that I'm being recouped and I can't say to the client, well, it's going to change every month depending on, you know, what the, what the exchange rate is. You know, and that's what I said to Invoice Sherpa. And they said, well, you know, it's, you know, we kind of work in that. We can't charge Canadians the same price. I'm saying, don't charge us the same price. Just give us a Canadian price, just like this. 99 US is 129 Canadian. Perfect. Our dollar is not as good as the US dollar. We get that. We know that. You don't need to pound it into us. But yeah, just a flat price. And that's what I really like about them. And they listen. And you've just proven that that they got back to you when they're making a change. Yeah, so now I need to contact them about the upgrade button. I mean, part of me doesn't want to bother because I plan to upgrade anyway, and then it will be a non-issue. If I stick with right. them, I will get the pro level. Uh, but for somebody else, uh, that's not something that you want your clients to see. It shouldn't be advertised as client facing. You know, they have all these you know they have different roles and one of them is called client so by default they should not be getting uh, accounting firm targeted information yep exactly now the one thing i didn't like with them when we went through the 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 demo with them is that i have to be the one to add the clients on and this is why it's been stopped because covid stopped me i'm busy with other things and I can't have, I can't just add a team member on as an admin and have her add things on because if she does, she automatically becomes the main admin for that person. I have to add them on to let everybody see because if she adds them on, I can't see that she's added them on because I've added her under me for the hierarchy. So I don't like the way the hierarchy works that way either. For just yourself, it's not bad. But if you're dealing with a team where Leanne is the operations leader and I delegate a lot to her, it doesn't work that well. So that was my, you know, real issue when we had it, but we found it, it was simple. It was easy. We liked the way that it flowed. We liked, again, you can't beat the price. For the price, it does so much. I mean, there's so many different types of reports and forecasts and budgeting and benchmarking against other businesses in the same industry for a one yeah. flat rate for all of your clients. Whereas yeah. if you want to do, get a, an app that does a fraction of that, you're looking at a minimum of $30 per month per client. And if you want one of the better ones, you're looking at $100 per client. So yeah. that the pricing model is what really appealed to me because I work with a lot of startups that need help and cannot yes. afford that advisory. And they've been missing out and I want to help them, but at the same time, they cannot afford to me to do a manual progression pro projection. I can do it in sifting, you know, very quickly. You know, it already runs an automated one, and then I can tweak it if I need to. So in, in that regards, that's why I, I'm really liking what they've done so far. And yeah. I've been, I added them, I added the trial when you had done the financial series last year. Yeah. That's when I first heard of them and I signed up for a trial and I never did anything. But I opened their emails and I kept seeing every few months, oh, we now do this. We now offer that. So I like that they are invested in improving the product. I just, I am surprised that they haven't fixed this client facing stuff. Well, Is it your I, wish, to hear? I wished I had known about them because I would have had them in 
with that series last year, but I, I hadn't found them until afterwards. Um, but they seem to be listening. You know, that's it, that they seem to be listening to, to make those changes. They do want to work um, a few other things, and I can't even remember at this stage, but they wanted to try to work into it. But they want to try to, I think they want to try and work some tables into there as well and like expand once they've got this part. So it sounds like they've got big plans, which is good, but it's good when you see them coming out. Like you say, if you get the emails, that's why I like a big click. There's constantly changes coming out. You know, Tonight you'll get an email from ClickUp with a minimum of three new features. Exactly. Every Friday evening, a minimum of three new things released. Yep, exactly. And that's what we like to see. We don't want to see an app that is just going to stale and not move forward. We want to see an app that's continuously improving because we need to improve what we're doing for our clients and our efficiencies, or even if it's just to, again, better ourselves and, and you know, a, give different services or right now during COVID again people are more looking at the forecasting and am I going to be able to make it through and you know they're getting subsidies in but I was just talking about something the other day or I think it was my husband we were talking about this next round and he said so what are you going to do like if there's a pullback I said I'm telling my clients to stay for that rainy day that's I mean you know and those that don't listen I, I just got to hope everybody listens to me but Sift helps with that and, and we have to be moving again with anything. So I don't like apps that aren't re not necessarily reinventing themselves, but again, just pushing and making their product better because there's always some way that we can make something better. Always. So it's does just anybody, Sift? sorry, Sift, S-Y-F-T. Oh, S-Y. So yeah. Does anybody else have any experience with Sift? No. Now Stacey is going to be looking down and then complaining that it's costing her money, but it's a really good value because it's <laughs> unlimited flat free rate and then you can build it into the pricing for your clients. So it's a very profitable revenue stream. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong, Jessica. I don't regret any dollar that I've spent thus far. <laughs> it's just expensive. That's, every time I talk to people, it's more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And we wouldn't yeah. want to lose you, so just stay, okay? Okay. Just lock up your wallet. She gets her bribery mug being sent to her. I don't have it <gasps> here to show. Yes, she she is a boot camp graduate as of yesterday officially. Yay! Yay. Yes. So she gets her mug to be sent to her with the I survived on it. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, I bet you, you know, you probably spent more money on these Friday calls than in boot camp. Boot camp, I'm all about saving money. You don't need to spend that. You don't need that. You don't need that. <laughs> but mind you, Kathy and uh, I spoke the other day and we both ended up spending more money after the phone call too. Best I money I've spent so far is 17 hats and that's thanks to Tanya. Tanya, I, I, one day I'll get it. so worth well, it. It's so good. Good. Love it. It's, it's, bookkeeper, okay. it's bookkeeper retail therapy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have something to show off that I know everybody here is going to appreciate. Okay. He found the Monopoly board. <laughs> <laughs> no, he about, showed it earlier. About, about three weeks ago, I used up the last page of one of these. <gasps> that wow. came with me when I last left my office job, and it's got to be almost 30 years ago. Oh. Oh my God. I was going to say, how many inches was the dust on that? <laughs> yeah, well, it had to be. It had to be. I was doing something for a client, and you know, I just couldn't do it on. I couldn't do it on Excel because I had all kinds of stuff on the screen, and I was trying to pull information together from four different places. And I used it. And I said, "Oh my God! I just used the last two pages <laughs> after thirty some odd years." I know a group like well, this. good because we don't want to see But I had to go buy another one when I went to Staples the other day because Warren. God only knows there's going to be a day I'm no. going to need this again. No. no. We can't be friends anymore, Lawrence. Forget it. That's okay. Two I... foxes on the call. What's that? Two foxes. Yes. Two foxes. Yes. And, and, and oh, fox. Yes. Yards. Two renards. Yes. I'm like, who's the foxes? But yes, Jessica and Lawrence. 
I'm like, what so, and, and I know another bookkeeper okay. last name of Fox and the three of us went to another meeting one other time. We confused oh, the hell out of everybody. <laughs> and Lawrence, every time my husband sees you, am I commenting on something in my feed? He's wondering if you guys are related. <laughs> Where's his family so, from? <laughs> you never know sometimes. You know, uh, years tell. ago when I worked in the corporate world, I actually worked with the uh, Lawrence Fox, but wasn't you, Vancouver, <laughs> sorry. I, I have, there's there's a guy who I know, and he's, funny thing is he's with me, who used to work, the two of us used to work for my dad a very long time ago. His last name is Fox, and we're not related. But his family always had bright red hair. Oh. Okay. I mean, I know that, I knew that Leslie was going to be at a, at a meeting one time, so I, uh, I brought up this as our, as the virtual background. Where is it? Just a minute. This doesn't exist anymore. Oh. Okay. This was in downtown Toronto. That's my father's gas station and car wash where basically I grew up. Oh, wow. wow. And it's actually a photograph in the city of Toronto archives that my wife found. And I said, well, I have to have that. So, oh, wow. So it's in a down, it's downtown right near the St. Lawrence market. There's a condo on that property now, but. Wow. Huh. So I, I brought that to the networking event where I knew Leslie was going to be, and he looked at the picture and freaked out because he hadn't wow. seen that picture in 30 years. But we used to wow, work for my dad selling. It was a full service gas station and a full service car wash. And, and we used to work there. And That's awesome that. that you were able to get that photo. Sorry? Of it, or that your wife was able to get that photo of it. That's well, awesome. she spotted it in the Toronto archives online somewhere. And she gave me the information and I went and I downloaded it. Yep. Oh, that's great. Because that must have so many memories for you too, right? I mean, just sitting there looking at yourself with it in the backdrop, I could just imagine the memories, you know, that you must have, like, you know. Well, I saw that picture when Gail gave it and says, oh my God, I still, and then I found more pictures shot at the same time because the entire neighborhood has changed. Yes. And I kept looking at all the other pictures around the neighborhood and says, oh, I remember that cafe and I remember that place and I remember that one, you know, so it was. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of like when I go, we'll be, I guess, going into where we're from. So we're from um, originally just west of Toronto, so Georgetown. Go through Georgetown and Brampton, and I'm like, I remember when all of this was fields. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, well, we'll have to report back to each other on, on SIFT once we get working with it. Again, Jessica, we'll have to report back on that. <laughs> Yes, I look forward to it. I'm introducing the first client to it next week. I still don't know if I'm going to send her an invite. Hopefully she will want to get her hand in the pie. I mean, if she asks for it, I will give her the access and just give her a heads up, ignore the emails. Right. <laughs> you, know, you really want to switch to accounting. Well, hopefully it's not. You know what I'll do when I add it on this weekend? Um, I wonder if I can add it to one of my dummy files and give us as an email instead of like the client's email address just to see and then let you know. I mean, that's what I did because I have G Suite so I can create unlimited aliases. So I just did my email plus test as the email address. Right. And then the thing is that you have to tell the client you're going to get an email from Seth because the branding, unless they're changing that, is very Seth specific. Even though you can add your firm's logo to the reports, it doesn't carry over to the invite. So the invite at a glance can look like spam if they don't know what right. to look for. Right. That would be, that's concerning as well too. You're right. If clients don't know or. It's yeah. Doesn't and I told that to my account manager and she's like, well, if you upgrade to enterprise, then you can complete white labeling. I'm like, I'm not asking for white labeling. I don't mind that my client knows what I am using. I just no. need them to know this is coming from me. Well, exactly, exactly. And that's, I'm looking at this and I wouldn't need enterprise. Uh, like, uh, again, we're pro. That's what I did. We're at the pro. I don't think I would need, you know, I don't need the full white label domain, but you're right. We don't need to white label it. Just make the wording nicer. Hey, your accountant or bookkeeper has invited you, right? Yeah. Just general is fine. <laughs> 
So, but that yeah, they do seem to listen, which is what I really like to bait them as well, too. Yeah. So, yeah, so I guess we'll have to, yeah, get back about that. Yeah, I like that. Anytime I've contacted them, I've gotten a response within a few hours. Whereas when I had the issue with PyPy switching to Manta and messing up all my clients, it took like four days for me to hear back. And I didn't hear back with a response. I just heard back with an acknowledgement finally. Oh, okay, we're looking to look into this. And so I had to wait even longer for an answer. Right. right. Yeah. No, and that's 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 not what we're looking for when we're looking for customer service. Yeah. For sure. If they can't get back to you within 48 hours, they suck. Yeah. I'm sorry. It, it, I mean, it's time and age where we're so used to instant gratification. And us in the accounting industry, we we want a response while we're working on it. We don't like to have to switch gears later on. Okay. Well, not only that, if you're in the middle of working for something, well, I my client where she was on this QBO advanced payroll by wage point. She was trying to get something fixed for a payroll. And four days later, they still had not called her back because she had to run payroll. So she ended up running it outside. And so now I've had to go in and get the template to fill out the Excel spreadsheet to send to them so they can put the payroll in there, which is now only year to date numbers. And we had to remit in the payroll remittance portion to CRA separately, which if she hadn't hired me, she wouldn't have known that. And, and they still have not called her back. And I, is the payroll in the U.S. is the same? I have a client with QBO no, payroll it's, it's that- it's Canadian. Uh, yeah, I know, but I'm saying oh. that the U.S. version is the exact same. I have yeah. a client that had an issue with her payroll in April and they still haven't uploaded the spreadsheet that I created for her to send over there. So oh, no, you have, have to get their spreadsheet. Providers, and now we're trying to get them to stop remitting sales, the, the payroll tax reports because they're like, Cancel it. Stop. We already switched to somebody else. What do we do for payroll? Because QBO kills me. It's awful um, as far as the, the payroll goes. I'm using WagePoint, which is okay. It's just one client on WagePoint. They did the standalone or QBO advanced payroll by WagePoint? Uh, just a standalone. Okay. And the vacation calculation is like they're calculating vacation on vacation paid out. And I've written to them a few times. I'm like, you guys, no, no, stop. Why would you even do this? Depends on the province you live in. In BC, that is correct, Meredith. Oh, geez. Well, then. I guess but you pay vacation pay on top of vacation pay? Uh, but no, yeah. I called. No, I called. Um, I called employment standards and they and confirmed. They said, no, there's no vacation on vacation pay. So I hey, called. I heard that from a few BC people, which is why. I don't touch any province. Like I will only do payroll for here and I will not touch any province that is I've been doing that payroll has PST. For a long time. Don't come to Alberta because we do vacation pay on vacation. Yeah, I've I call them and I've been doing payroll for a long, 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 long time. And I've never ever paid out vacation on vacation. I'm pulling my book out to double check it. Yeah. I mean so I was like, this is weird. It called and then like I said, I called employment standards and they no, don't. Okay, so I do. I, Meredith, I'm so glad you brought up the issue of payroll. Awesome. Because because I have a client that I'm quoting a conversion from desktop to online, and it's we're going to do it as of his year end, which is the end of this month. But he's on QuickBooks payroll. Mm. And I'm stay on QuickBooks payroll. He's QuickBooks he's on desktop payroll. payroll. He's using QuickBooks payroll for desktop. If he's on QuickBooks desktop payroll. Yeah. Yes. Currently. Stay on, stay on it until the year end. Do that's not what I was going to. Mid year. Yeah, that's what and I was going to recommend to him. Year to date stuff. It is not worth it. I do have a confirmation that the QBO basic payroll vacation accrual is going to be released in the next bit. I'm actually on the beta test with Andrew Dobre. As soon as it comes out in the next couple of weeks, but yeah, if, if they don't have it fixed by the end of the year, I'm dumping them. So. So, uh, so that the next so, question is, is do you, do you consider the QBO basic payroll worth his while three months from now? Or should we look into another alternative? How, how complicated is the payroll? Right now, Our payroll it's not, for PC is very complicated. Okay. His is not because right now it's just either two or three employees on straight salary. 
Okay. I have all of the clients that I do payroll for, I actually do the QBO payroll. Um, they are all the basic payroll. They are all um, either baseline minimum wage employees that all I have to do is punch in the hours. There's never any commissions. There's never any, like there's nothing special or fancy about it. Or I have salaried people. I've never had a problem with it. But they don't have any commissions. They don't have like there's nothing out of the ordinary. And in once you get into anything that has something extraordinary, then you might want to jump into the advanced payroll or well, anything. okay, but my problem right now, and this is where with this new client, so the KBO advanced payroll by wage point, mm -hmm. she also uses T sheet mm -hmm. and T sheets and wage point don't talk together well oh. enough that when the hours will get into QBO for mm -hmm. billing purposes, but the hours will not go into the QBO advanced payroll by wage point. So I have to manually enter the hours. You, you process it and you pull up the wage point payroll, no hours. And it's not something they're going to change. I just well, and, having a big argument with them this week on that. And, and isn't that funny? Cause two ish years ago, whenever the advanced payroll by wage point was set up, they were the ones saying, Oh yeah, you can't use the timesheets in QuickBooks. You had to do. You had to use T sheets. But it doesn't work. But it doesn't work. See again, I don't have any. None of my employees. We're not. We're not using T sheets to connect anything. I, for my payroll, I do, um, and it works. But that's just. Yeah. Well, so no, she has the T sheets, but we want the T sheets when it gets into QuickBooks yeah. to be billable hours, which she needs. Yeah. So I don't know if the QBO basic payroll and T-sheets so, will do that well enough. So with the basic payroll, because that's what I have for on my QBO A, um, I use T-sheets and it comes into my QBO, it goes into the payroll and it goes in to be able to do billable hours. Okay, that's so, all I need to know because I'm gonna recommend a switch then because I'm, it, it's a margin for error. If you have to manually put in hours yeah. and if it's you know 85.35, then you go in, put in 985.35 it doesn't calculate outright and and just, it, it's just something else that you have to touch so Lawrence getting back to your question it. if you yeah. have a simple payroll I actually find the basic QBO payroll to be quite nice well and, other and than the vacation pay which is supposed to be fixed in the next little bit and we won't even and, get on and if he's only got three employees is there any advantage to him just doing it manually oh yeah don't do manual kind of like throwing away that scribbler book you just put up there right yes we automatic lawrence get into the 21st century i am in the 21st century but every once in a while i need an 18th century yeah. tool we oh no. you're again, talking you're talking to a man who wears a pocket watch and writes with a fountain pen again lawrence i have one client that we do ledger book payroll for and dead simple one employee no. minimum wage and the whole bit yeah i know carol don't look at me like that i get that we have but you one can use client knit payroll that's free did Pardon you know me? you can use knit payroll which is free yeah i i know that's going to be our next step but this was sort of a, a last minute thing anyway um pocket watch it takes <laughs> it takes Mountain me pen. it may only take me a half hour to calculate the payroll for this fellow using the manual way, it takes me no more than 10 minutes to do a payroll on QBO. Well, then you're looking at T4 filing and, you yep. know, yep. tracking and PD7As. Yep. And like, yep, all of that, it it is so... Only, only the basic oh, well, the, the T4s, the TD1s, uh, yeah, no. No, I, I, I listen, I, I, it's why I came here this afternoon was to figure this stuff out. <laughs> to get beat hey. up by five women. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, I could go upstairs and have my wife hit me with something. I, <laughs> I said, my office option. is in the basement of the house. As an alternative option, we like knit. We like knit payroll as an alternative backup. So how do you spell that? K-N-I-T. Yeah, knit people. Oh, they me. are doing a lot of changes. They listen. Um, have a good weekend, Jessica. Yeah, the, the, they're making a lot of changes, a lot of upgrades, and they listen. 
they really listen. I said to them with the billing, I'm I like, oh, you guys sent me, you know, this bill and I've got like five bills. I just want one bill and one withdrawal. The very next month, they took one withdrawal out, but I said five bills. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want one bill with one withdrawal. And then the very next month after that, it was fixed to do one bill, one withdrawal. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the name of the Tell company? them there's something and we want a new report. They're listening, like on the Facebook group that they're in there, the developers that, you know, and the founders, they're in there and they do listen. And that's what I like it's, about them. It's Mint, M-I-N-T? No, 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 Knit. Oh, knit. Yeah, like knitting needles. Oh, okay. Knit. Yeah, knit. 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 knit, yes. Knit. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, we quite like them. Um, I've been using them for probably like seven months now. And yeah, so I'm, I'm like Stacy, if it's basically what the differentiator is, Knit will pull the payroll deductions. So if the client wants to pay their own payroll deductions, they go QBO standard. If they want the payroll deductions paid, they go Knit. And why not wage point? Wage point and I don't get along. Um, I, my brain doesn't work the way that it works. I went in to try okay. to set it up the very first time. It, I fought with it and I ended up like chatting with Paul Burns at like three o'clock in the morning, our time, you know, which is like noon, your time. Um, Cause he's in BC, I think too, but trying to get through some of this setup and it was like, oh my gosh, it should not be this complicated. And then I stepped away. We did one pay run and then I stepped back and then I thought, okay, let's go in and let's try the advanced payroll. Um, with wage point. Um, so I went in and I tried, we actually tested, did the beta testing on that, did not like it, waited until they did some upgrades, went back in, tried it again, and it would not let me do a manual pay run. I couldn't sign up and then do a manual pay run. It had to get approved in the back end. And all yes. of this, I'm like, I just want to be, I want to cut a check. Tell me the amount to cut. Okay, because I've been trying to get them to answer this question for me because I need to input one payroll, which I actually think has been done. And maybe I forgot about it because it was all COVID times. Right. Because so, now the totals are actually what they should be. So I think I might have sent it in. Um, but manual, like in everything else I've used, we can simply do a manual payroll. No problem. So why this is so difficult, I don't know. So maybe at the end of the year, I'll, I'll check out NITS and... And, 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 and it them. is cheaper. It is cheaper. It is dollars a month. Well, not, not necessarily cheaper than Intuit, like than standard QBO, cheaper than wage point. It is $20 per month and then $3 per employee. That's our pricing. Should do not tell clients. I'm that. paying it is 29, 29 flat. I don't know. I'm paying less than that with wage point. Are you okay? Cause yeah. wage point directly is 20 bucks to pay run generally plus two bucks an employee. I'm yeah I'm getting a discount so I think I'm paying 18 bucks a pay rent and two bucks an employee right now okay. okay yeah but I like you said the the manual thing is really important when I was doing payroll when I worked for the town here I I manual was I needed that all the time because things were that was a big payroll that's different or if you now. fire somebody you got to pay them within 48 hours you need yeah to exactly yeah. <laughs> that's right so, although it's it's cool. so it doesn't happen all the time yeah so, so um, has, um, oh, oh. Sorry, Nid has that. Wait, wait. if you fire <laughs> someone, you have to pay them? Since when? <laughs> oh, uh oh. We can't be friends anymore. I already told you that. <laughs> uh, but you can also schedule, which I like about that, which I don't like about QBO, and that you can schedule auto run, which you can in Wage Point too. So that seems to be a nice mixture between them. Um, and again, I like the service. I like the fact that they listen and they're responsive. Whereas Wage Point, it was like, I don't like this. This doesn't work. And they were like, well, that's how, that's just how it is. They did not try to fix it. They were just like, no, nope, that's just how it is. Okay. Well, I can't believe that the two, that T-sheets and wage point, blah, 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 won't play know, right? sandbox. It's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then things like, like I used ADP when I worked for the town. So that was way more robust for what we, you know, and we needed that. Um, I have a client who uses Ceridian just for herself. It doesn't cost any more than wage point would cost for her. So I wouldn't move her over, um, but I'd like the reports. So like, I, I guess I'm using everything right now, but QBO is my least favorite. I but wish ADP I hate the most because I, I, they have no reports that I can just simply. Exactly. It's like, exactly. oh my word, I have created a, a Excel spreadsheet that I can then make my journal entry you for a new client. In what world are we living in that ADP still has that? It works fine if you're integrating into Sage, but not QBO. 
it's like anyways we can add payworks to <laughs> no, the mix it doesn't. payworks right yes so i use payworks for one of my clients specifically so i can write my own custom reports all the time oh well that's because you're an excel wizard no it's not excel based oh it's not it's like i want this column and i want this data and i want this piece and spit me out a report and so we do it because of departments and projects and like government reporting. So it's very robust. And we were with Ceridian before, cut the price in half. So okay. very reasonable. Pay it's points? got a client portal. Pay works. works. Pay works. Pay I've works. seen it. Where's Stacy? It's out of it's out of Winnipeg. <laughs> it, it used to be the one that was deluxe payroll, right? Not sure about that. Oh, anyways, I, I, I just I like try and control it myself. I'm a bit of a control freak. Aren't we all? That's why we do what we do. <laughs> I just want, I, I want to know I can run a payroll. Yes, I have a deadline. And I want to know that I can then upload it to Telpay to pay it so that I then transfer the funds. I have control and I know that it's done and done on time not doing it and then sitting on pin venue are they going to get it done on time did i meet the deadline oh my god what if what if what if and then all of a sudden friday comes or thursday and you get an email going oh you didn't do this on time therefore no one's getting paid no oh anyway lynn hello you joined us very late <laughs> sorry Welcome. i i was at the sage excellence awards and it oh nice it was different. <laughs> it's a different doing it virtually. It's certainly a different experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're well, glad you came. Cool. Yeah. Anybody that you know that you'd like to give a quick shout out to the win awards? Um, Andrew, to see if I can remember. Andrew <laughs> Dubay won for the uh, Alan Salmon Lifetime Achievement Award, and Bianca nice. won it for social media. Oh my gosh, I can't remember all the names. They were all well-deserved winners and uh, kudos if anybody's watching, congrats. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Awesome. It's just strange to do it virtually. Right, yeah. you know? right. Well, congratulations to Bianca and Andre. Um, and yeah. yeah, well, anybody else who's out there. And I apologize for not remembering everybody's name. But. Well, that's, and that's why Bianca's not here. She's, she was busy accepting her reward, mm -hmm. her award, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting at IPBC doing awards night virtual as well, too. I know. Yeah. TPB yeah, was... Canada? Sorry. TPB <laughs> Canada. You're right, CPB Canada. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, we've gone over as usual. <laughs> As you, we started late, went over, but so yeah, so I guess we will call it because I didn't really get a chance to eat my lunch. So if you saw my head dip down, I was like grabbing one or two and, I, and that's why my dog was barking because I had like food. It was just like salami and crackers, but yeah, she wanted the salami. She's like, you're not eating it, share it with me. And if you don't look long enough, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Never, she's too short to get to it. So. Oh. <laughs> you're lucky. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Where there's a well, there's a way. <laughs> well, she's a beagle and they'll do anything for food. So yes, you're right. If left alone with the food, that would have been very different. <laughs> yeah, we had it. one year when our, our little dog, she's only 10 pounds and I don't think she was that. Then we were on holidays and I had just finished doing fish. It was on the table. She literally, she jumped on the chair and jumped on the table. I was like, oh, I was just putting stuff in the sink. And I turned around and she was on the table. Wow. It's like, um, no. Carol, no. you're not owned by cats, are you? <laughs> no, I don't like cats. Okay. Well, I, I'm owned, by, I was raised by a schnauzer, but I'm now owned by cats. <laughs> They're on, I had one cat that you couldn't keep him off the table. That's why I don't have cats. Yeah. Well, I married the mad, the mad cat woman of Thornhill, so <laughs> I didn't have a choice. My, my aunt and uncle used to have two dogs. One was a standard poodle and the oh. other one was a, um, um, a shit poo, um, a shih tzu poodle. So just a, 
and the tiny little thing couldn't get up on the counter, but the standard could stick his nose in and he would stick his nose in, grab what was over off the counter and throw it down on the ground for the little one to get. <laughs> well, clever, my, my daughter has a mini Aussie and her and I had made lunch. We'd made actually roll ups with, you know, gluten-free wraps and everything. And they had some meat in them and we thought, Oh, we forgot something. So the two of us dashed into the kitchen right beside the dining room to get whatever we forgot, turned around and came back to the kitchen. And somehow she had managed to get into the roll-ups, remove the meat and be on the floor. We have no idea how she did it and didn't leave, didn't leave any other evidence. Unwrapped them and took the meat. Yes. Well, I remember seeing a video that there was, they used to leave something on the counter and they would come home and it was gone and things would be moved around in the house. And so they took a video and left a video running. The dog pushed the chair up to the counter, up to the counter, hopped up on the chair, up on the counter, got the food, jumped down, pushed the chair back. Wow. Yeah, you're like, what is going on? Like, is somebody breaking in? Like, they have no idea. And they did that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I saw that. And I'm like, yeah. And of course, I, you know, it was a beagle. Yeah. <laughs> it was a beagle. Anything for food for the beagles. I think yeah, that was my, dog. Dog. my girlfriend, they have a Leon burger. And so he's got his big dish of food and he's standing there and he's going like this. He's going, with his nose into the bowl. And of course, on the kitchen floor, the kibble's going, bah, bah. and I'm like, um, Susan, Thor's doing it. She comes out, she goes, dang it, stop doing that. I'm taking your food away. And he's just looked at her, right? I said, well, what's he doing? He goes, she goes, well, sometimes we'll put goody stuff, but we'll put it at the bottom. <laughs> so he'll eat the other stuff first. So he was checking to see if there was anything in there. So he's just <laughs> nose diving to make it fly so he could see if there was anything <laughs> in the bottom. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Oh it my god. They may be dogs, but they're not stupid. No, oh, no. Gosh, no. Oh, if no. you've ever seen a Leon burger, they ain't small. No. Yeah. All right. So yes, we've gone even more over, and it no. is now quarter to five, and my tummy is now growling. So I do need to go eat. So yes. thank you very much for joining us so this on, on this Friday afternoon. Have a very wonderful week. And for those of you that have to do a little bit more work, try to take it easy and cut off early. I have a cocktail party at five, an online cocktail party at 530. I'm not rushing to do any more work. Oh, there you go. There we you have, go. We, there's a group of us that meet every Friday afternoon on Zoom at 530 and have since the quarantine started. So. Nice. I gotta go, it's I gotta important go to keep the social going, right? So yeah. for sure. Well, Lynn and I have a date tomorrow morning. We do. It'll be Very socially nice. distanced. But it's it going to be a physically socially distanced one. Yeah. I'm going to her house. Well, have fun, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see Bye. you Bye. 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 Have a good weekend, ladies. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye.